Hello there. In this video, we will be learning about the capillary rise. So if you take a water beaker and put a narrow tube, let's say if you put a narrow glass tube into this water beaker, you would see that the height of the water will simply rise in this particular narrow glass tube. Now, this is what is called the capillary rise. Capillary rise refers to the phenomenon where the liquid rises in a narrow tube against the force of gravity due to the cohesive and the adhesive forces. Let's first try to understand what is happening over here. And this is actually will be the reason of this capillary rise. If we zoom this a little, we can say that this is how the meniscus would be formed. So if we try to find the angle of contact in this case, this is how we can define the angle of contact. And the angle of contact in this particular case, as you can clearly see, is coming out to be less than 90 degrees. So it's an acute angle. This tells us that in this particular case, the adhesive forces are stronger than the cohesive forces and the water likes to stick to the surface of glass as compared to being sticking it to itself. So the cohesive forces between the water and water are lesser as compared to the adhesive forces between the glass and the water in our situation. This curvature that gets created, that is exactly the reason of the capillary rise. Let's try to understand in detail. Imagine that at t is equal to 0, the water has not risen. So this is the situation at t equals to 0. So the pressure at these particular points greater than the pressure at this particular height because you can see that this is lower. So what actually would happen is this excess pressure will force the water to go upwards and this is exactly the reason of capillary rise. Now let's try to quantify what is the height to which the capillary would rise. For that, in order to find the height of capillary rise, we need a prerequisite over here. So the formula for excess pressure inside an air bubble inside the liquid is given by, so we can say that pressure excess is equal to 2 sigma divided by r, where r is the radius of this particular circle. Very carefully, if you see that this particular section of this bubble and water interface is very much resembling with this particular thing that is happening over the top portion of the capillary rise. So we can extend this over here and make it into a circle like this. So we can say that the excess pressure inside this region would be equal to 2 sigma by r where sigma is the surface tension and r is the radius of this particular circle. So now imagine the pressure in this side is P in that is pressure inside and this is pressure outside the bubble. So we can say that pressure inside minus pressure outside would be equal to the excess pressure and we know that the excess pressure in this situation is equal to 2 sigma divided by r where sigma is the surface tension and r is the radius of this bubble. So now let's come back to this. We can say that the pressure over here just here would be equal to p inside and the pressure just over here would be equal to p outside. And we know the difference between these two pressure, pressure inside minus pressure outside equals to 2 sigma divided by r. We can say that the pressure inside is actually this pressure and that is equal to pressure atmospheric. And this atmospheric pressure would also be over here and over here. So we can say that the pressure at this particular point would be equal to P atmospheric pressure. Let's say the height to which the water rises from let's say this particular point is equal to H. And let's say the density of liquid is rho. Now let's compare the pressure at point number 1 and point number 2. Now if you carefully see point number 1 and point number 2 are at the same height. So we can clearly say that the pressure at point number 1 should be equal to pressure at point number 2. Now the pressure at point number 1 is equal to P atmospheric pressure and that should be equal to pressure at point number 2 and the pressure at point number 2 is equal to first the pressure because of this liquid column so created and the pressure due to a liquid column is rho into G into H where rho is the density of liquid, G is the acceleration due to gravity and H is the height of the liquid column. So in our case we can say that it would be rho into G into H plus if you carefully see, we also need to add P out because that's also the pressure over here. So we'll add P out. Now let's get back to this particular equation. So this says that the P inside minus P outside would be equal to 2 sigma divided by R. 
and as we know that p inside is equal to p atmospheric so we can say that p atmospheric and we can rearrange this equation as p atmospheric minus 2 sigma divided by r would be equal to p outside and now let's put the value of this p outside in this particular equation so we will get p atmospheric is equal to rho g h plus p atmospheric minus 2 sigma divided by r so from this equation p atmospheric and pre atmospheric get cancelled so we, we are left with 2 sigma divided by r is equal to rho g h 2 sigma divided by r is equal to rho g h and we were interested to find the height of the capillary so we can find the height as h is equal to 2 sigma divided by rho g r now this is the equation that can help us to find the height to which the capillary rises in this equation we know the sigma that is equal to the surface tension we know the value of acceleration due to gravity that would generally be 9.8 meter per second square and let's say we also know the density of the liquid that we are talking about the only unknown in this equation is r because in this particular case r was actually the radius of bubble but we do not know the radius of bubble what we can rather do is we can relate this with the radius of the capillary tube in this case we are aware that this is what is called the angle of contact that is let's say theta in our situation and this is the radius of this bubble so we can draw a triangle like this where this is let's say capital R and we can define capital R as the radius of capillary tube so let's find out this particular expression in the terms of capital R that is the radius of capillary tube this is theta and this particular line is the tangent to the circle so we can say that this particular angle would be 90 degrees and we also know that this particular angle is also 90 so by simple geometry we can say that this angle comes out to be theta and in this triangle we can say that cos theta would be equal to base by hypotenuse so that would be r divided by small r so we can say that small r would be equal to capital r divided by cos theta and instead of small r we can just plug in this particular formula over here so we can say that h is equal to 2 sigma divided by rho into g into instead of small r we can write capital r divided by cos theta now this is our final expression to find the height that the capillary would rise to sigma is the surface tension cos theta theta is the angle of contact r is the radius of the capillary tube g is the acceleration due to gravity and rho is the density of the liquid i hope now you are familiar with the capillary rise and the formula to find the height of the capillary rise see you in the next video till then bye bye